Now that we have Artboard 1 completed, we can move on to Artboard 2. So this time we're going to be recreating Johannes Itten's Color Star and Four Color Process. So step one would be to create a new artboard in the same file with 600 point width and 600 point height. So to do that, we'll move over to the Artboards palette over here, click on the tab, and then create, click on the Create New Artboard icon. That should create uh, another artboard, same size as what we had before. So we don't even need to add new dimensions, but if we needed to change the size, we can double click on this icon and it'll show the artboard options. So here's the width as 600 and the height as 600. So we can cancel out of that for now. And to start off with, let's create uh, a new layer called Circles. So click on Layers on the Layers tab and then Create New Layer. So click on the Create New Layer. This time we're going to hold down the Option key and that automatically brings up the Layer Options dialog box so we can name the layer right away. So name it Circles and then click OK. So now we can create guides and position the guides at 300 points down and 300 points across. We already have the same guide that we've used for the triangle, so we don't need the horizontal guide, we only need the vertical guide. So I'm just going to click on the left ruler and then click and drag until we get to the middle, somewhere about there. So that's not very precise. I want that guide to be precisely positioned. So I'm going to go to the View menu and then go to Guides and Unlock Guides. So that's Command Option Semicolon. That way I can click on the guide and then position it exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to change using the reference point in the center, change the, well, probably could use any reference point at this point because it's just a line. Uh, the X coordinate should be 300. Exactly. So there we go. We've got the vertical line is at the 300 um, point um, value in the Y coordinate up here. And the, um, the vertical is at the, the 300 X coordinate. So that's exactly what we want. Now we can again lock under view guides, lock guides. We can lock the guides and now we can't select them anymore. Great. So next thing is select the ellipse tool and position the crosshairs cursor at the intersection of the two guides. So we'll uh, grab the ellipse tool and there's two ways you can select the ellipse tool if we go over to the, uh, the toolbar, uh, click and hold to bring up the menu, and then select Ellipse Tool. Or we could just option click until we get to the tool that we want. So now we know we can <clears throat> we're on the Ellipse Tool, and we can option click right at the intersection of those two guides right in the middle of the artboard. So option click and that will mean that we are sizing our ellipse from the center. So it needs to be 350 points in diameter so I'm going to click on this little icon here constrain width and height proportions and that way I only need to type in once for the width and it'll automatically fill in the same proportions for the height. Then I can click on the OK button. Great, so now we have our circle, but we need that circle to have a stroke of 100% black 
and a fill of none. So fill is none. If it wasn't, I would click on none here. Now I click on stroke in the color palette and then change that to black using the black preset. Perfect. So now I can copy that circle. So <clears throat> under the edit menu, go to copy and you can see that is command C. For some of the most used commands, there's always going to be a key command, so get used to using those. Now we can also paste in place. So to do that, go to the Edit menu and then choose Paste in Place. So that is Shift-Command-V. Once we have that done, we can take a look at the Layers palette and we can see that, ah, well, we've got two ellipses and a guide. I actually didn't want my guide to be in the, uh, the circles layer, so I can actually just click and then drag that down to guides at the moment. And now all my guides are in the proper layer. So I'll just close that layer, and I can see that I've got two ellipses now. One is on top of the other. So if I option click on one, it shows that it's in exactly the same place. Option click on the other and I'm selecting this, this top object. Now I can go up to either the control bar at the top, which has some of the transform, transform fields uh, arranged up at the top here. But I can also click on the transform tab to activate the transform palette and I can see some of these same fields on the transform palette. But there's also some additional options listed here as well. So at this point I want to make sure that my reference point is the center point in this grid of um, anchor points or squares reference points um, on the transform palette and it's the same same idea uh, in the control bar at the top. So if I click on the center, that's what I want. Uh, what I'm going to do is change the width and the height. So if I'm using the control bar at the top, I'm going to need to click on, well, I don't need to, but this is going to be easier, to click on the constrain width and height proportions icon. And then I can change the 350 point width to 300. Great, so that automatically changes the height to constrain the proportions. So basically I want to keep on doing that is copy command C and then shift command V to paste in place. So I've added another ellipse and I'm going to change the width now to 250. So I keep on reducing by 50 points. And I'm going to keep on doing that. Oh, yeah, so just make sure uh, when you're copying, you're not actually copying um, the text field uh, for the, um, the height or width. So I'm going to use my se selection tool and then click <clears throat> on the object that I've created, Command-C, Shift Command V, and then change the width to 200. Again, Command C, Shift Command V, and then change the width to 150 and enter. Command C, Shift Command V, change the width to 100. Command C, Shift Command V, and then finally change it to 50, and we've got all our rings. So you notice how each of the, the weights of the lines are getting thinner and thinner. What I really wanted to do is make sure that all the lines are going to have the same width. So what I'm going to have to do now is select all those circles and then choose the stroke palette, change the weight to 
1 for all of them and then deselect. So if I didn't want the the strokes to change weight every time I resized then I would go to the transform palette and make sure in the, under the options scale strokes and effects is turned off. So if I click here that's going to turn uh, turn off the check mark for scale strokes and effects. So this time if I was going to for example scale this center line copy paste in place and then change this to 400 now it didn't increase the size of the the line weight it only increased the size of the shape itself so I'm going to undo that command Z because I only want those sets of rings I was just demonstrating the, the resizing 